rabies and germs, welcome to NJ Today. You're watching this either on my official YouTube channel or on Mishmashers.com. And in this video, we'll be picking up where I left off with my review of Star Wars The Phantom Menace. And if you didn't watch that video, you can check it out before you watch this one. And if not, I'll summarize that review by saying I had some strongly negative words about The Phantom Menace, mentioning that it's a lot of the reason why I had never seen Star Wars Episode II, Attack of the Clones, until now. I didn't know a lot about this film. As I said, I've always been far from a devout... Star Wars fan, and I believed it when everyone told me that the prequel films were god-awful, taking their word for it. However, The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi, and discussing them on the Mishmash podcast with Scott Moore, I decided I would go ahead and at last see what the fuss is about. Without further ado, I will now go ahead and share my thoughts on Star Wars Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out Mishmashers.com, as I intend to review and talk about the other entries in the series as well. Star Wars Episode II, Attack of the Clones, is an epic space opera directed by George Lucas, at the time, the second Star Wars film directed by him, the third, of course, being Revenge of the Sith, and the second film in the Star Wars prequel series. The film is set ten years after the events of The Phantom Menace, and the galaxy is on the verge of an all-out war. Led by a former Jedi named Count Dooku, thousands of planetary systems are hell-bent on separating themselves from the Galactic Republic. In the midst of this, Padme Amidala evades assassination by the skin of her teeth and is given protection by now a much older Anakin Skywalker. His mentor, Obi-Wan Kenobi, also investigates said attempt on Padme's life. All of this sets the groundwork for a new threat to the galaxy. The reception from audience members and critics to Attack the Clones is perhaps a little better than what it was for The Phantom Menace, although I wouldn't dub it appropriate cause for celebration, if only because how neck and neck they are. In terms of box office returns, Attack of the Clones was still a box office success worth celebrating, but it showed the shine was starting to come off Star Wars after Phantom Menace. The film made over $350 million less than Phantom Menace worldwide, and finished fourth worldwide in its year of release. I will go ahead and end the suspense by saying I think that Attack of the Clones is better than The Phantom Menace, a film that I absolutely despised. From the get-go, something noticeable is the way the Obi-Wan Kenobi character improves in comparison to The Phantom Menace. And I'll be honest, I had to do some honest consideration on if it was simply because he has a beard now. I think I would say that on some level, the character comes together better because he has an actual contrast in Anakin that he did not have with Qui-Gon Jinn. In the last film, both the characters were stoic and tedious, whereas in this film, Obi-Wan feels like the voice of reason amidst Anakin's emotional instability, and simply put, it's a much better dynamic. To Early in the film, I didn't really understand the dislike the older Anakin received from everyone, and it was then I saw some of the temper tantrums done with the character. In some respects, Anakin came off like a Romeo-type character, and that he is very sentimental and has a very simple, almost dim-witted teenage angst and instability. Of course, although I have that interpretation of the Anakin character, I can most definitely comprehend full-heartedly why so many dislike the character the way they do. The character and the dialogue he's fed come off unnatural and, once more, as I described with characters in The Phantom Menace, as cringeworthy in their utter badness. Not only that, but the way the storyline unfolds is far too convenient and workmanlike, as though there is no nuance or heart. It feels so inorganic and forced. The dialogue for Padme Amidala is every bit as bad as Anakin's, and although part of me wants to be upset about how the way her character has been reduced to a one-dimensional love interest, the other part of me certainly never cared about her in The Phantom Menace. More of me is upset that so many capable actors and actresses throw their talents in these Star Wars films, and what amounts from them is so little. I think I'd go ahead and say the action scenes are an improvement over the first film, but I would still say they lack. I think what it comes down to is I find the scenes themselves a little undercooked and lacking pizzazz. Imagine if we had choreography like in the John Wick films, and someone more equipped to spruce up and spring together the narrative. That's what I want. I'll go ahead and say the action scenes are fun, but nowhere near greatness's door. That said, Attack of the Clones had some scenes I liked. For instance, the way that Anakin snaps at one point in the film, showing the first big example of how unhinged he is with his emotions. The chase scene early on with Anakin and Obi-Wan I also enjoyed, and I think, for the most part, I like the settings for this film a lot more than I like the Sandy Tatooine in The Phantom Menace. The visual aspects are solid. I thought Phantom Menace left a lot to be desired in that department. But Attack of the Clones does a lot better. Simply put, Attack of the Clones operates at higher capacity to the Phantom Menace in practically all departments. 
departments. So all in all, as I don't really have much to say, Episode 2 has its fair share of fumbles as far as storytelling is concerned, its dialogue, and the delivery of said dialogue. But the action scenes and scenery improve, and the film itself has a couple of moments worthy of being highlighted. I wouldn't call it a great film, and I wouldn't even necessarily call it a good film, but I would say it's a decent film, and I would rank it far above Menace. But of course, that's only my opinion, and I'd love to know what you think. And so, if you loved or hated Attack of the Clones, make sure to let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe as I intend to share my thoughts on the preceding episodes soon. Thanks for watching, my name's McConaughey from Mishmashers.com, and I'll see you next time when I share my thoughts on Star Wars Episode 3, The Revenge of the Sith.